cortical cystectomy itself is obviously at the very core of general surgery and is one of the most common operations performed in the abdomen by general surgeons in their career. It's this operation that is quote unquote supposed to always go smoothly and be straightforward, but it's not always. And again, performed with high frequency. And so then when that bile duct injury occurs, which is a statistically low frequency event, but nonetheless can happen with some regularity just because of the frequency of cholecystectomy overall, it can be so devastating. If you have a bile duct injury in the operating room, or you think you have a bile duct injury, one of the most important things to do is call for help right away. Um, don't let your emotional involvement and concern about what's happened affect how the patient gets managed. So get some help, first of all. Um, most institutions have a pretty robust peer support program when surgeons have had adverse complications. And I, it, we, we just should not have the mentality that we have to bear this burden all on our own. All of us as surgeons have been through serious adverse events, and it helps to talk to people and to know that you have the support uh, to get through it. And I, I think I would argue strongly that if there's one thing that surgeons can do in their individual practice to minimize the risk of having a bile duct injury, it would be to understand and apply the critical view of safety on every case. I had a couple of bile duct injuries very early in my career in the early 1990s when lap colon first started. And, you know, fortunately the patient outcomes were good, but it, it certainly affected me emotionally for a considerable period of time. And it, and it, and it, it impacts surgeons as well. If I believe, and as I do, that that is a, is, is a cost of doing business and that that is not the fault of a surgeon, then I want to use language that doesn't revolve around fault. Uh, and so from the very beginning, the residents, when they we accept a patient and transfer, understand that communication for biotic injuries has to come from the top down and that their, their directive is not to really speculate or answer questions that we're gonna use language from the beginning in both the language we speak to the patients and the language we use in a chart that is not implying causality or fault where we don't understand it, that we were not present for the operation as it occurred, and that it is not for us to judge what was done or if there were opportunities to do something differently because we weren't present.